He conquered the country by kidnapping the Aztec leader and exploiting the ensuing chaos. Cortez's story was later published and became a bestseller, a handbook for any would-be conquistador. It can still be found in the great library of Salamanca University in northern Spain. This wonderful library here can be thought of, among other things, as a repository of dirty tricks because in these books are the accounts of what generals had been doing to other generals for thousands of years in the past and across much of Eurasia. And here from this library we have a famous account of the conquest of Mexico with all the details of what Cortes did to the Aztecs and what worked. Um, that was a model for Pissarro to give him ideas what exactly to try out on the Incas. Whereas the Incas, without writing, had only local knowledge transmitted by oral memory. And they were unsophisticated and naive compared to the Spaniards because of writing. But if books were so useful, why couldn't the Incas read or write? To develop a new system of writing independently is an extremely complex process and has happened very rarely in human history. It was first achieved by the Sumerian people of the Fertile Crescent at least 5,000 years ago. They pioneered an elaborate system of symbols called cuneiform, possibly as a way of recording farming transactions. Ever since, Almost every other written language of Europe and Asia has copied, adapted, or simply been inspired by the basics of cuneiform. The spread of writing was helped enormously by the invention of paper, ink, and movable type. Innovations that all came from outside Europe but were seized upon by Europeans in the Middle Ages to produce the ultimate transmitter of knowledge. The printing press. The written word could now spread quickly and accurately across Europe and Asia. The modern world would be impossible without the development of writing. But there's another part of the world where a new system of writing was invented independently. In southern Mexico, at least two and a half thousand years ago, native people developed a way of working with symbols that evolved into the Mayan script. But if the Maya had writing, why didn't it spread south to the Andes and help the Incas become literate? For Diamond, the answer lies in the shape of the continents. Here are Europe and Asia forming the continent of Eurasia, a giant continent but it's stretched out from east to west and narrow from north to south. The American continent is long from north to south, narrow from east to west, very narrow at Panama where it narrows down to less than 100 miles. The two continents are of the same lengths, about 8,000 miles in maximum dimensions, but Eurasia is 8,000 miles from east to west, and the Americas are 8,000 miles from north to south. It's as if these continents were rotated 90 degrees of each other. Diamond has already shown that crops and animals could spread easily east and west across Eurasia. Because places at the same latitude automatically share the same day length and a similar climate and vegetation. But the American continents were the opposite of Eurasia. A journey from one end of the Americas to the other is a journey from north to south. A journey through different day lengths 
different climate zones, and dramatically different vegetation. These basic differences hindered the spread of crops and animals, as well as people, ideas, and technologies. The people of the Andes were chronically isolated, without access to writing or almost any other innovation from elsewhere in the Americas. By contrast, Pizarro and his men were geographically blessed. As Spaniards, they enjoyed the benefit of technologies and ideas that had spread easily across Eurasia. The events of 1532 were clearly influenced by deep causes over which no individual Spaniard or Inca had any control. The shape of the continents, the distribution of plants and animals, the spread of Eurasian technology. These were facts of geography. And at almost every turn of the drama, geography was tilted in favor of Europeans. It's the morning of November 16, 1532. Atahualpa has agreed to meet the Spaniards in the town of Cajamarca and sends his entourage ahead of him. But he makes a fateful decision that his soldiers should not carry weapons. The Indians were musicians and dancers. They were soldiers but unarmed. Why would Atahualpa unarm his own soldiers? Why? Because he was in the festivity. He was celebrating. He wasn't going to war. He was going for a celebration so that the whole people could see how the alleged gods would run away in fear. The fact that some people believed that the Spaniards were gods would play better in the hands of Atahualpa's uh, purpose. If I know they are not gods and I defeat the gods, then of course everybody will